Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a while and I promised to have all the chapters ready for you before the major exams and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So if you have the workbook, if you were one of the lucky people who got it when I made it um, free or if you were someone who bought it and I really appreciate it, um, I actually have to reiterate that I did not make it free. I gave people the option to pay what they had. So it wasn't exactly free because some people were able to pay like, you know, two dollars um, instead of like the full amount, which at the time was ten. I have not cut it down to, I think, five or six dollars. So like if you still want to grab a copy, please do so. I think it's a useful workbook. From what I've heard, students really enjoy using it. And these videos are just solutions to that workbook. So I am going to have these ready for you, like I promised, before May, June begins, like literally before the end of April. Um, so I hope that that's helpful because I can tell some of you are getting quite antsy about the fact that the videos are not ready. Um, I'm sorry that it's taken so long. I don't only do, uh, what's it called? I don't only do content creation. I'm actually in real life a policy um, specialist. So um, this, this is like a, a little side gig for me, but I hope that you've been finding these videos helpful and I hope you continue to share them and use them in your classroom for the teachers who are using this channel. Okay, so this is 6.2, which is um, about protein synthesis. And the first question is that for protein synthesis of course in two phases, transcription and translation, please provide a summary of the main events in each phase. Um, so I did not really specify how many points you should give here. And I suggest that if you're like writing this in your workbook, that you should be a bit more detailed in your answer than I am detailed here. And if you want the full details, please check out chapter 6.2. That's a video that I did on protein synthesis where I explained it in detail. Um, so transcription is basically the copying of the DNA to form a single-stranded messenger RNA molecule, or what you might call mRNA. And in copying the DNA to form mRNA, you change timing to uracil. So every time you find adenine, which is A, you will change it, you will bind it to uracil in RNA and not to thymine as you would do in a new DNA strand. Translation is the conversion of that messenger RNA molecule into an amino acid chain to form a protein's primary structure. What I did not mention here is that translation involves the tRNA, right, which is the transfer RNA. And what that RNA does is that it will read the triplet codons on the mRNA, so the triplet bases, which is what we call a codon. And it will then um, match with the mRNA with its own triplet codons called anticodons, which is what the next question is, anticodons. And each anticodon is attached to a specific amino acid that aligns with the mRNA. Um, and I think I'll get to explain that a bit on the next question. But if you really want to get more detail on that, just check out chapter 6.2, which is a video that I did and is on the channel um, about protein synthesis. Okay. Um, then compare codons and anticodons. So codons are triplet bases that you find on mRNA, and they correspond to the DNA code in the nucleus. Anticodons are triplet codons that you find on tRNA, and they correspond to the triplet codes of the mRNA. Um, where is the site of protein synthesis? You all know that that is the ribosome. Okay. So now let's look at this. Um, this is a good question for us to try in order to explain how protein synthesis works and the type of question that you might get in the exam um, regarding this chapter. So it says here, the following is a DNA sequence. Whenever you get a DNA sequence like this, I would just say, go ahead and take your pencil and start to draw lines um, every three bases. And the reason why it's important for you to do this is so that you don't get confused um, when you are trying to transcribe it because you need to read this, okay? You need to read this. And you can see in some cases like C, triple A, T, you need to read it and read it in a way that is convenient. So I would just say go ahead and draw lines and like make um, those triplet codes visible. Then transcribe the DNA sequence into mRNA. So again, remember if it's timing, you get adenine, but if it's adenine, you get uracil in mRNA. All right. And for cytosin, it remains guanine. So this would be what your triplet code would look like if you follow it all the way to the end. Then 
write the anticodons for the mRNA sequence in one above. So again, you're just basically taking that. So you can see because it's anticodons, um, you're basically writing out the tRNA. So you still stick with A binding to uracil, all right? You don't change it to timing. There's no timing in mRNA or tRNA. All right. So once you've done that, the next question then says, what is the amino acid sequence of the DNA sequence? So if you want to get the amino acid sequence of the DNA sequence, it means you work with the mRNA. Please note that whenever you are asked what the amino acid sequence is, you use the mRNA and not the tRNA, okay? Not the tRNA. The tRNA is the one that is bound to a specific amino acid, and it will bring it up to the mRNA. But you use the mRNA itself to determine what the amino acid should be. And this is important because if you use the tRNA, you're going to get a very different sequence. Let's say, for example, we go and use the tRNA here. So this is the tRNA, all right? This is the tRNA. So let's go ahead and use this. So if we say UAC, for example, the way to read this table, by the way, for those who might not be clear, is that you look at the first position, which would be the first letter, and this, in this case, it's U. So you're looking, it means you're looking in this, somewhere around here. Then the second um, letter is A, okay? So in the second letter, you're going to go to where A is, and you can see A is over here. Okay, so the second letter is A, and the third letter is C. So for the third position, you're going to come here, C, and if you draw that arrow down there, that's pointing you to tyrosine. So if you use the tRNA, you will get tyrosine as your first amino acid here. But that's actually not what the sequence is. Okay, so do not use the tRNA and assume... Ah, uh, well, it's transcribed from the mRNA, so it should be the same. You will get the wrong answer. If you use the mRNA, you will see AUG. So I'm just going to redo um, what I just did here, just to show those of you who don't know how to use this table, um, how to do it again. So methionine is what, I mean, should be the first um, thing, but I'll just show you how we got there. So first position is A. So we know we are looking only within this phase here, all right, like within... Not where that line is, but I'm just saying within all those boxes there, okay? That's where our um, amino acid is. The second position is U. So you basically come to where U is, which is here. So this could be any one of these, all right? And the last position, the third position is G. So if you draw a line there, you find that you are pointing at methionine. And if you follow this through, you'll see that you get leucine, glycine, glutamine, threonine, serine, valine, and then you get a stop order, which basically tells you that is the end of the protein. So please make sure you try that out and you get the right answer. Um, and try as many possible um, questions on this uh, that you might find, because I see that students tend to make mistakes here, mostly because, first of all, they start by not parting um, the DNA codes that they get into triplets and they make mistakes when reading them. Okay, now to the last few questions um, in the workbook. It says, what kind of DNA mutation is it if the fourth base in the sequence changes from G to T? So if you change a base in the DNA sequence, that is called a substitution mutation. And it is the least, um, least lethal mutation, if you want to put it that way, because um, if, if there's a substitution, the DNA might be able to correct the error. If you delete a base, that is called a deletion mutation. And if you insert a new base somewhere in the sequence, that is called an insertion mutation. Now, deletion and insertion mutations are both very, very significant because they basically create a, a frame shift. So they can change your DNA molecule basically completely. Because if you go and insert something into the DNA, those nice triplets that we had will no longer be the same, especially if we insert it in the middle, an amino acid might change in the sequence. So maybe perhaps instead of getting valine, we get something else like maybe glutamine. And then that means we've made a different protein because those two um, amino acids are very different from each other. So these are the questions on that. And I hope that you have enjoyed this. Look out for chapter seven. It is following very shortly.